Hello, guys and girls. It is I, Aaron. The Halo uh, 18. And I'm gonna do a Christian uh, vlog of uh, part one. And I'm trying to do a, do a little video here. I've been praying uh, every night about a, for a, a I prayed for a girlfriend uh, last night and stuff like that. And please pray for me to have a girlfriend as well. And for me to be right with God uh, first and then have a girlfriend like, like that. And, and I've, I've been trying to get people to... Help me out with this and... I really want to do this, and, and some girl on Facebook sent me an article about uh, being si single or something uh, like that. And the article. It's called, Will I Be Single Forever? This is from April 9, 2016. <laughs> and the article uh, by Stephen uh, Whitmer. Uh, scripture, Philippians uh, 412. Topic, Dating and Singleness. And... 8.5 8 8,500 8, uh, people have shared uh, this article they show the picture of a a girl sitting on a rock and, with the trees and stuff and the first article says I was single all through my 20s and I enjoyed it a lot of the time when I wanted a particular food for dinner I ate it when I wanted to take a week to hike on a 200 mile section of the Al Alpachian Trail, I hiked it. When I felt called to pursue graduate work in another country, I went. And there were other less selfish benefits, including more time and energy for building deeper friendships and fruitful ministry. But all in all, I found singleness pretty tough. There were seasons of terrible loneliness when I wondered if God would ever give me a lifelong companion. At times I was like a, a served, severed power line, a voltage of unfulfilled longing causing me to thrash, thrash about in ways that hurt others. I was sometimes jealous of married friends. I did not always navigate singleness with grace, pose, deep faith, and steadfast joy. Instead, I blundered between enjoyment and regret. Happiness and longing, purity and sin. I wish someone had helped me understand and then live my singleness in the light of eternity. I think it would have helped me to enjoy a godlier, more productive, more contained life during those years. A stable ground for soaring hope. Eternity changes everything, including our singleness. By eternity, I mean the future new creation God describes in the Bible. This is a future beyond our wildest imaginings and most fervent hopes. It's this present world renewed, restored, and remade into a perfect place with no more sin, suffering, brokenness, tears, pain, or death.
the new creation will be far better than the original uh, Eden. Because what? Jesus will be physically present there. Revelation uh, chapter 22 verse 1. And the angel showed me the river of, the, of water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. And it will last uh, forever with his inhabitants never falling into sin. Not like Adam and Eve. In other words, the world's perfect future will be better than its perfect past. Even Eden was lovely fragility. The new creation will be Gorgeous stability. Eden was like an exquisite uh, china bowl. Beautiful but breakable. The new creation will be like the Alps. It's breathtaking and immovable. We're imperfect people living in an imperfect world. But this perfect future becomes. our future when we're united to a perfect savior for, through faith we can then be completely assured that this future is ours in the bible that firm assurance is called hope christian hope is the confidence that an amazingly good future is securely ours and this changes the way we view our present it strengthens and equips us in every life uh, situation, including singleness. It heightens our restlessness for the new creation. To grow more content, yet more restless. I, 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 I'm sorry if I'm a little quiet, a little slow. I, I have a hard time to sense what I get. Too sweaty or something. But I'll continue now. One of the feelings I often experienced as a single person was lack of contentment. Even some of my most enjoyable adventures and sweetest experiences were shot through by the longing to share them with someone else. <clears throat> A robust longing for eternity helps us with our discontentment by increasing our restlessness. That sounds like a contradiction, but it's not. The Apostle Paul was a tremendously restless person. One who said he was strained forward and yarned for God's final future. Molly, I need help here. Uh, Philippians, the uh, Philippians, <coughs> chapter 3, verse 13 through 14. And it says, Brothers, I, in this quote, that's what the Bible says, it's from uh, ESV, uh, ESV, the ESV version, the one I read. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. 
I press on towards the goal for the prize. Yeah, yes. Keep us there. That's my mom. Uh, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And the next one is Philippians 4.12 and it says I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound in any to every circumstance. I have learned uh, the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And yet he also said that he had learned the secret of contentment in any circumstance, Philippians 4.12, the two are intimately can you me? are related after all. The reason we grow discontent in our singleness to our job or marriage or car or children to anything else is because that person or thing wherever it is looks so big an eternity looks so small. If you hold a coin close enough to your face, it will obscure an entire city skyline. When our present circumstances look bigger than eternity, we have lost perspective. When we lose perspective, we tend to load too much of our contentment onto something. Never decide to bear the weight. We look to a spouse, a friend, a vacation, or accomplishment. To, to give us the happiness they never can. To give us the happiness they never can. <clears throat> Your marital status in heaven. The problem with this way of living is that it leads to perpetual discontentment. If God gives us a better job, but we're still seeing our job as bigger, more important, and more meaningful than the new creation, but either sacrifice everything to excel at it or be destroyed if we lose it. If we're single and all we can see is our longing for a spouse, it's rather than eternity with Christ, it's well low down a God spent spouse with the crushing weight of needy expectation. Or become a resentful or cynical or broken hearted single. A discontented single person will become a discontented spouse and then a disconnected parent. Until eternity breaks in and moves to the, cent to the center. God is more concerned with the change in our perspective than a change in our marital status. If eternity is at the center and a husband or wife or child fails us, or if we don't have the husband, wife, or children we're longing for, it will be painful, but we'll be okay. Because we know a perfect eternity is still ours. There's a nest in our oak. And it will hold us steady through the disappointments, missed opportunities, and tragedies of this life. The more restless we are for the new creation, the more our thoughts and emotions are kept captivated by it, the less will be shaken by disappointment in his life and the more will see every present blessing not as a final destination but as a signpost pointing toward eternity. The more restless we become, the more contented we are. Perhaps if you are a single person, your identity 
as a single has moved to the eternity, I mean, has moved to the center of how you think about yourself. But it appears from Jesus, Jesus' teaching that eternity will all be single. There will be marriage in the new creation. What will define us forever will not be our marital status, but our enjoyment of the perfect presence of Christ. That means a single person who loves Jesus is much more like a married person who loves Jesus than like a single person who does, doesn't know him will know Jesus forever and be loved by him for eternity. This is way more central to our identity than our marital status. Don't think of yourself as unwanted by any prospective spouses. Know yourself as loved forever by Jesus. It's likely that for many, not all, singles, there will be moments and seasons of loneliness and longing. Times when it feels awkward to be the only single person at the table or the party. That was certainly my experience. But knowing our God and his financial future, for us plus knowing ourselves in light of that future, can produce a profound contentment in our present. And there's a, the, the, there's a description about the author too. And it says, Stephen Whitmer is a pastor of Pepperell Christian Fellowship in Perpel, Massachusetts. Tusich. Tusich. Yeah, I said it right. Uh, the first time. And teaches New Test Testament a at Gordon Conwell Theol Theological T Seminary. He is the author of Eternity Changes Everything and a 12 week study in Revelation. He and his wife, Emma, have three young children. And the related articles are oh, the first one is Single, you will be the married. Single, you will be the married you. So if you think marriage will miraculously transform you, that married you, you will suddenly be a whole, holier version of single you. So you could not have more, uh, you could have not, you could have. You could not have been more wrong. Next one is single, satisfied, and sent. A mission for the not yet married. Satan loves to deceive and discourage single people to the church and derail our devotion and ministry. Here are eight suggestions for making the most of your not yet married life. A third, when the not yet married meet, Dating to, dating to display Jesus. And while the great prize in marriage is Christ, centered int intimacy, and the great prize in dating is Christ centered clarity. And other and seven other principles. Molly, uh, I need help here. That's my bed uh, beeping off. I, I thought this article was a uh, uh, pretty good. I don't know what made me think of this girlfriend uh, thing lately, but I just wanted to share my thoughts about it. And uh, I've even mentioned uh, she would have to be a, a Christian. Same interest as me and, that's, and all that. I wrote, I, I would have been writing on Facebook and texting it to all my friends about it and stuff. I've been, I don't know why I've been thinking about it. And the, the, these articles are pretty. Can I, this is from Desire, DesiringGod.org, the, that website for with Christian articles and stuff.
Mommy? Uh, I need help here, Mommy. Mom, Mommy? I, I keep trying to get my parents to uh, help, but they're kind of busy. Uh, mommy! I need help here. Uh, Daddy, I need help here. Okay, somebody help me here. Molly! I can't do this video. I need help here, Molly! Molly! Oh man, come on. Somebody, somebody help me here. I'm a pretty handsome guy. And I have a great sense of humor and, and, and stuff. And I just want people to know that I, I'm a I'm a great God, Christian and stuff. And I, I should be reading the Bible. Uh, more often, and I've been in a course party with some people on Facebook today, and they, they've been giving me some encouraging things, and I even asked for advice at times, and some of them gave me some advice, and I don't have, I'm not able to get a career, or anything uh, like that, and and uh, sorry that I keep calling uh, off to my parents in the video, and, uh, I've been. I keep trying to call them to help me push me or, or uh, whatever. I I hope they will help me today. And uh. And uh, I. I just hope some girl out there will will like me and see who I am and see that I am a Christian that I do love. God and stuff, and uh, I just need a little help uh, sometimes. But and uh, please uh, really pray for me about this. And it's been really heavy in my heart, and I have a desire for the, for to have a girlfriend uh, soon to, who will read the Bible with me, and uh, then that she will pray uh, uh, with me and. Uh, join me for and, and be with me at Bible studies and stuff and uh, do all kinds of uh, Christian things with with me and and uh, and, uh, and I would love her to be uh, beautiful and attractive and and uh, I don't care if she is blonde, red-haired, head or brunette. I just want somebody there uh, for me and somebody that can grow up. Uh, Help me to grow better in my faith and with Christianity, and I want to have God in my heart uh, more uh, first, and uh, everything else is second. But God is first, because it is so awesome. Eternity is awesome. 
you get to live uh, forever with uh, Jesus and and he he loves us and I I think I love Jesus too and I wish all my uncles and aunts and parents and mom and dad and everybody to repent and believe in Jesus more and be a strong Christian and and become Christian too and whatever we, struggles everyone has help us to, to overcome it and be a better person and. And I, I just, and I would love to uh, hold hands if I had a girlfriend and kiss them, too. Uh, I think uh, relationships and love is, are very good. And Satan wants to destroy it and take that away from us. And I, I love to have friendships. I love to have friends and and stuff and I, I like to do vlogs or blogs about things in my Christian life and that's why I'm doing a like a vlog uh, series uh, I guess and and uh, and I should pray uh, more often and read the Bible uh, every day too and uh and hopefully God will provide me with a girlfriend uh, one of the, uh, this year. I think I, I have very, I have confidence in, I don't know if I can get a career or a job, but hopefully my good buddy Matt uh, Peters will come by today and hang out with me. I, I, a lot of my friends are Christian, and I even told my best friend Zach Gray uh, tonight to have me today. Repent, and get and believe in Jesus. That's what I said to him. And I want everybody to be in eternity, uh, too, for themselves. And we are important to God's kingdom. Uh, and uh, that was a really, really good article I read uh, today. And. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble. Uh, I'm having some troubles and, and pains today. I when I get too uh, sweaty, my fingers slip on the computer and mouse pad. I can't work it very well. Uh, my way. Now wait. Uh, uh, now wait. Lowey! Lowey! Uh, Lowey! I need help here, Lowey! Lowey! Mommy! Mommy! Yeah, I'm sorry guys, uh, my parents are not being re very responsive right now. I I I'm trying to get them to push me here. I keep trying. I'm sorry if I keep yelling at the video.
I don't, I'm trying to remember what else I said in the in the text I I wrote it, and I, I and of course I wanted to I, I would talk with with if I had a girlfriend I would talk with her, and talk about superheroes and or play video games with her too and even do superhero things watch superhero movies and go to movies and watch Christian movies too and, and learn uh, about Christianity and uh, hopefully some of my friends are trying to. Uh, I I always ask my friends to help me with uh, girls uh, as well. I probably have to go. I I don't know if I'll be able to read the later articles and stuff. Uh, but I'll probably read it in blog my Christian blog part three uh, videos. Uh, I guess I don't want to make it too long or uh, lengthy. I done it for 30 minutes already so I, I just would love to, and uh, please help me out with this uh, too uh, people on YouTube and uh, please always pray for me about everything in my life please pray for me to read the Bible more uh, pray more and love Jesus more be more of a Christian uh, show my faith to others and get them to know who I am as a person. And for them to see that I am a Christian. And for people to keep their promises about visiting uh, me and, and to. And hopefully my best friend will come over and hang out with me tomorrow and Tuesday. And uh, Zach's always making uh, jokes and here and there he banters with me. And says that he always makes fun of me with the girlfriend thing. And our dad kind of teases me about it too. And and my dad's coming here to push me. And there's my dad, the best father I've ever had. Oh, you're such a smooth talker. Turn that back. Is Matt still coming over? Uh, more, more that way. I'm making a YouTube video. All the way. All the way. So it's me. Are they here for Sorry, but Matt's kind of uh, my friends have kind of flaked on me uh, sometimes too. But I, I hope that they will come and and I'll, I'll try to tell them more about Jesus too. And please pray for me to be a better Christian and, and tell others more. My right arm for tonight. Four more. This is a cool. I like these articles. Uh, and hopefully, this Matt will bring her friend, his friend Christy, so that I can meet her and stuff. I would love to meet uh, people's uh, female uh, friends they met over the uh, months or years. Okay, I'll, I'll just do more. And I would read the Bible uh, with her. I think I said that already, though.
Uh, this next article is from June 6th, uh, 2013. <clears throat> it says, when the not yet married meet teen display Jesus. Uh, dating is dead. So it says the media. Girls stop exciting guys. Girls stop expecting guys to make any form of attempt at winning your affections. Don't sit around waiting for a boy or make him for her to communicate his intentions or even call you on the phone. Exclusivity and intentionally are ancient rituals. rituals. Things of the past and misplayed hopes. I beg to differ. It's not that this new line of thinking is necessarily untrue today, or that it's not the current corrupt trend of our culture. It's wrong. One of our most precious pursuits that of a lifelong partner for all of life is tragically being related to tweets, texts, and Facebook posts. Do ambiguous flirtation and fooling around it's wrong dating that preserves marriage there is a god and this god created and rule god created and he rules his world including men women the biological compulsions that bind them together to the institution of that declares their union and keeps it sacred as they if our only he could prescribe to their purpose parameters to means of our marriages. A full fullness of life could be found in sexual stimulation or if it was just a matter of making babies. The the forget from reality and just have sex approach might temporarily satisfy cravings and cause enough conception. But God has much more in line with romance than orgasms, or even procreation. And so, and so could, uh, and so should we. So, so must we. When people in the world are expe expecting less and less of each other in dating. God isn't so among the seagull. We have to work harder in our not yet married relationships to preserve what marriage ought to picture and provide. Mom, where do wedding weddings come from? Nothing in my life and faith has been more confusing and spiritually hazardous than my pursuit of marriage from far too young. I long for the affection, safety, and intimacy I anticipated with a wife. Sadly, my immature and unhealthy desires predictably did match, did much more harm than could. I started dating too early. I stayed in relationships too long. I experimented too much with our hearts and allowed things to go too far. I said, I love you too soon. And now, my singleness is a regular reminder that I messed up, missed opportunities, or didn't work. I'll, I'll read what this guy says about himself. And, uh, I've never been in a relationship with a girl or, or anything like that. When I was in uh, school, uh, girls didn't come up to me and talk to me. And I, I'm kind of shy uh, myself, and I have struggles like every other guy, too. Even though I, I'm in a wheelchair and disabled, and, and hopefully these, these articles I'm reading will uh, mean something to me. I'm, I like these articles that I read, and I want people to know what I read and the, the things I... So I want to talk about it. This is what I want to talk about. And 
Maybe dating has been hard for you, too. Maybe dating has been hard for you, too, for these reasons or others. Maybe Mr. or Mrs. Wright has started to look like Mr. and Mrs. That myth. Maybe you wanted the relationship or liked the guy or girl. You've never had the chance. Maybe all the suggestions and advice you've collected has become a confusing mess of good intention, contradictions, and ambiguity. It's, it's enough to leave you like an eight-year-old asking, Mom, where do weddings come from? <sighs> Expecting more from marriage. Uh, the vision of marriage we see in God's word. The beautiful, radical display of God's infinite, preserving love for sinners. Makes it worth, worth it to date. And date well. The world approach can provide fun and fun and sex and children and eventually even some level of commitment. But it cannot lead to the life giving Jesus tender whom our marriage our marriages are to are to take their cues. Friends who enjoy, who enjoy sex with no strings attached will find pleasure but not the peaks waiting on the other side of mutual promises. The happiness of marriage is not only or even mainly physical. With the sex, there ought to be a deep sense of safety, a sense of being loved and accepted for who you are, a desire to please without the need to impress. So when God engineered the sexual bond between a man and a woman, he made something much more satisfying than the act itself. Those are reckless to give themselves to a love life of dating without really dating. Of romantic renderous renderous without Christ and commitment are settling. They're, they're settling for less than God intended and less than he made possible by sending his son to rescue and repurpose our lives, including our love lives for something more, more happiness, more security, more, more purpose. And the more is found in a mutual faith and, and following of Jesus. But this more we can say to the watching world, don't settle for artificial and thin loyalty, affection, security, and sexual experimentation. So God intends and promises so much more through a Christian union. And a Christian union can only be found through Christian da uh, dating. If Christian dating, the intentional selfless and prayerful and a prayerful uh, progress of pursuing marriage sounds like slavery we don't get it if low commitment sexual promiscuity sounds like freedom we don't get it Jesus may ask of us ask more of us but he does so to secure and increase our greatest and longest lasting sexual happiness. How then shall we date? For those whose roads are marked more by mistakes than selflessness, patience, and sound judgment, take hope in the God who truly and mysteriously blesses you, your broken road and redeems you from it and who can uh, begin in you a new pure, wise, godly pursuit of marriage today. Here are some principles for you not yet. Marriages is not nearly a comprehensive or exha exhaustive list. 
They're simply lessons I've learned and hope can be a blessing for you. Your boyfriend or girlfriend and your future spouse. It, it would be girlfriend uh, for me. I guess this, this article is for men and, and women to read about dating in the right uh, Christian way. And uh, I really do uh, believe that this this is possible for me uh, to happen. In. And uh, I kind of have a tear in my eye about it. I get kind of emotional about this stuff a little bit too. And uh, it is very important what these guys are saying in this in these articles uh, to me. And yeah, I know I'm doing a long video. And I don't care what people comment about this video. I'm going to do Christian videos like this. I'm, I'm doing these vlogs for a reason. I want people to know that I am a Christian. And I will always be a Christian. Uh, no matter what uh, anyone says or does. I don't care if people make fun of me about this. I'm going to pursue uh, everything I'm talking about in this video. And, uh, yeah. And I'll continue now. Uh, number one, it says, number one, it really is as simple as they say. In a day when people are marrying, later and later and more and more are resorting to online matchmaking. We probably need to be reminded that marriage really is less about compatibility than commitment. After all, there has never been a less, a less compatible relationship that a holy God and his sinful uh, bride and that's the mold we're aiming for in our marriage marriages there is a reason the Bible doesn't have a book devoted to how to choose a spouse there was a lot of oversight of the part of the God of all history and it's as if we could, he couldn't See it into the 21st century, the qualifications are wonderfully clear and simple. One, they must believe your God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6 14. And it says, it's from ESV uh, version, and it says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership? as righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness uh, and two they must be of the opposite sex Genesis 20, Genesis chapter 2 verse 23 through 24 ESV then the man said this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. They are all from ESV and Matthew chapter 19 verse 4 through 6 uh, and it says he answered have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and the, it, and the two shall become one flesh so they are no longer two but one flesh and then Ephesians uh, 5, 24 through 32, uh, ESV. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, Now, undeniably, 
there will be more involved in discernment while dating. Apart from questions of attraction and chemistry, which are not insignificant, the Bible article lates some roles for wives and husbands. Men ought to protect and provide for their wife. Ephesians uh, 5, 25 through 29. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word so that he might present the church to himself and spread her without spot or wrinkle or any such. Women ought to help and submit their man, submit to their man. Ephesians 2.18 The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Ephesians 5.22-24 Wives, submit to your own husbands, as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body in it, and is himself his Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit it. Fathers ought to, to lead their families in God's word. Ephesians 6, 4 uh, says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring to up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Parents must love and raise their children in the faith. Deuteronomy 6, 7 says, You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you, ri when you rise. So immediately we are looking for more than an attractive person who loves Jesus. That said, many of us need to, re need to be reminded that God's perfect person for me isn't all that it's not perfect. Every person who marries is a sinner. So the, so the search for a spouse is in a pursuit of perfection. But a mutually flawed pursuit of Jesus. It is a faithful, filled attempt to become like him and make him known together. Regardless of the believer you marry, you will likely find out soon that you do not feel as compatible as you once did. But hopefully... You will marvel more at God's love for you and Jesus and the amazing privilege it is to live out that love together, especially in light of your differences. Uh, two, know what makes a marriage worth having. The search for a spouse is it a pursuit of perfection, but it's an initial flawed pursuit of Jesus. I just got put it on Twitter, I guess. Uh, two. Know what makes a marriage worth having. In our worst moments, our objectives are small and misguided. We just don't want to be alone on a Friday night anymore. Anymore. We just want to post almost can it artistically frame pictures with someone on a bridge somewhere we want a guilt-free way to enjoy sex. We just want a guy or a girl to tell us we're handsome and funny and smart and good at our job, etc. And marriage only offered us these things, though it really wouldn't be worth it. Many will try to deny that, but the divorce statistics are enough to establish that marriage has more of you than most could have ever imagined of their wedding day. Most of my married friends would say that what she was wanted pretty and unbreakable at the altar did not feel as clean or easy even days in their lives together. It's still intensely good and beautiful, but it's costly, too costly for small 
aims. Marriage is worth having because you get God in your life, lifelong commitment to one another. Marriage is about knowing God, worshiping God, depending on God, displaying God, being made like God. God made man and woman in his image and join them together, giving them unique responsibilities to care for one another in their broken but beautiful union. What makes marriage worth having is that you, your spouse, and those around you see more of God and his love for us in you and, and Jesus. If you're not experiencing that with your boyfriend, break up with him. If that's not our priority, we need to get a new game to plan or probably a new scorecard for our next significant other. Uh, three, look for ch clarity more than an intimacy. The greatest danger of dating is giving parts of our hearts and lives to someone to whom we're not married. It is a significant risk. And many, many men and women have deep and lasting wounds from relationships because a couple enjoy emotional or physical uh, closeness without a lasting, terrible commitment. Cheap intim intimacy feels more real for the moment, but you get what you pay for. Or the great prize of marriage uh, is uh, Christ-centered intimacy. The great prize in dating is Christ-centered clarity. Intimacy is safest in the context of marriage, and marriage is safest in the context of clarity. The purpose of our dating is determining whether the two of us should get married. We should focus our effort there. In our pursuit of clarity, we will undoubtedly develop intimacy when we ought not to do so too quickly or too naively. What intention, intentional and out, outspoken Turner that is Christians' intimacy before marriage is dangerous while clarity is unbelievably precious. Uh, number four, find a fiance in the front lines. The great prize of marriage is Christ-centered intimacy. The great prize of dating is Christ-centered clarity. This is a throwback to a previous post. The idea is to look for love in the right places. Focus on the harvest and you're bound to find her high helper. Instead of making it your decision to get married, make your mission. God's global cause of the advance of the gospel. Uh, that where you are and look for someone to pursue the same. If you're hoping to marry someone who passionately loves Jesus and makes him known, it's probably best to put yourself in a community of people committed to that. This does not mean that we should serve because we might love, find love. God is not ultimately honored with, what, with, with that kind of self-serving service. No, it simply means that if we're looking for a particular kind of person, there are good, safe, identifiable places. Those kinds of people live and serve and worship together. Can not fall in a community like that to serve each other and look for God to open doors for dating? Five, don't let your mind marry him before the rest of you can. While this may seem like it's much more common among women. I've been single long enough around enough single guys to know it's not exclusively a female problem. The trajectory of all truly Christian romance ought to be marriage. So it should not surprise us to turn our dreams and expectations to our hearts to race out ahead of everything else. It simply isn't that hard to imagine what your children would look like or where would vacation together, or how a family holidays to work on what kind of house she might buy, and just like sex. All these things should be really good 
and safe and beautiful. So in the context of your covenant, Saint to constantly help you build marriage and family idols that are too fragile. So we are not married, not yet married relation. He told me he loved me. She said she would never leave. There are the seemingly priceless sentences that don't always cash. They're often said with good intentions. It's when without the, the ring, it's without a ring, like the results could be devastating. Guard your heart and imagination from running out ahead of your current commitment. Six, boundaries make for the best of friends. The most oft asked a uh, dating question among Christians might be, how far is too far before marriage? In fact, we keep asking that question as a chest. We all agree we need to draw some lines. And our lines seem pretty blurry to most. If you are pursuing marriage and it's going well, you're going to experience temptation. And a lot of temptation. Sexual sin may be the devil's Women have choice in corrupting Christian relationships. If you don't acknowledge your enemy and engage him, you'll find yourself wondering how you lost so easily some of our best friends. And the battle will be the boundaries we set to keep our, us pure. While a spontaneous plunges into emergency, it does not look great into chick flicks to feel great in the moment. They breed shame, regret, and distrust. So it's not talking about touching before. It's touching. Trade some retaliation for trust. Surprise for clarity and confidence. Make decisions prayfully and intentionally before diving in. Boundaries are necessary because on the road to marriage, it's got some tation. The appetite for intimacy only grows as you feed it. You are biologically built that way. Touching leads to more touching. Being alone together in certain situations will welcome fear, fierce temptation. Even praying together or talking for hours upon hours on the phone can create unhealthy overdoses of intimacy without not yet spouses. If we're honest, we much more often like to hear by wading into love too far rather than waiting too long to take the next step. It would be hard pressed, though, to find a couple to regret the boundaries they made in dating. That's why you will very easily find those that wish they would have made more. As followers of Christ, we really ought to be the most careful and vigilant. Boundaries pr protect, and boundaries provide the trenches of trust building. As we establish some mutual boundaries, Small and large and commit to keeping it. Then together we develop uh, depths and patterns of trust that will serve our int intimacy, content, covenant keeping, and decision making. Should God lead us to marry each other? Seven, consistently include your community. Dating is a matter of doing your best to discern. It's a person's ability to fulfill God's vision and purpose for marriage with you. So you might be the one with the final say. You might not be the best person to assess at every point. Just as in every other area of your Christian life. You need the body of Christ as you think about to the date, how to date, and when to, to wed. So it's rarely quick and convenient. You need the perspective of people who know you, love you, and have great hope for your future will always pay dividends. It may lead to hard conversations or deep disagreement. So it will force you to deal with things you did not or could have seen on your own. You'll find safety when an abundance of counselors. It's Proverbs 11.14 Set where there is no guidance, a people falls. So, in an abundance of cultures, there is safety.
invite other people to look into your relationships. Relationship. Spend time together with each other, with other people. Couples and singles who are willing to point out the good, the bad, and the ugly. Number eight says, let, let all your dating to be missionary dating. No, I am not encouraging you to date. Not yet. Believing men or women. When I say missionary dating, I mean dating that displays and promotes faith in Jesus and his good news. A dating that is in step with the gospel before the watching world. I want us to win disciples by dating radically, like confronting the world's paradigms and pleasure uh, seeking with sacrifice, so selflessness and intentionality in your dating confront the world's paradigms with sacrifice, selflessness, and intentionality. Men and women in the world want many of the same. Some things you want: affection, commitment, conversation, stability, sex, etc. And eventually, they will see that the ground of your lives and relationship is firmer than the flimsy th uh, flings. They know they'll see something deeper, stronger, and more meaningful between you and your significant other. Do the people in each of our lives know and love Jesus more than because you're together? Do they see God's grace and truth working in you in your relationship as you walk through life together? Are the two of you thinking proactively about how to bless your friends and family and point them to Christ more and more as the world is watering down? Dating your relationship can be a proactive picture of your Fidelity to Christ and, and a call to follow. Pursuing marriage the right way. And this is the last uh, end of the article, uh, guys and girls. And yes, my friend Matt Peters is here. Uh, sitting right next to me, uh, listening to me read about God. Pursue marriage the right way. Is this dating uh, perfectly safe? No. Will it keep you from being hurt or disappointed? No. Will it guarantee you never go through another breakup? No. But God, but by God's grace, and it may guard us from deeper heartache and more devastating failure. My prayer is that these principles would prepare you to love your spouse in a way that more beautifully and dramatically displays the truth and power of the gospel. If you are like me, you may have blown it on multiple fronts already. Maybe you're blowing it right now in a relationship. Be willing to make the hard decisions. Hard and small to pursue marriage. It's the right way today. Whether you're ultimately married to one another or not. Or married at all. For that matter, you will thank each other later. No, that was my video uh, for today, uh, guys and girls. And uh, I'm almost done here, so. And this uh, article got uh, 66,800 66, likes. Uh, I've shared this. And, uh, yeah. I really want to pursue this girlfriend uh, thing myself. And I think it'll be a good idea for me. So I would uh, also read the, the word with her, too. And, and, and pray and uh, get to know uh, girls first before uh, girlfriend uh, and uh, and uh, yeah I don't like being lonely or, or, or seeing a lot I don't know I've been praying about it for three days in a row, every night before bed and I, I just wanted it to happen and uh, like always please rate, comment, like, favorite, subscribe view, thoughts, and opinions, and I hope you liked it and enjoyed it for your viewing pleasure, guys and girls, and please, like Ghost Robo says, please drink some hot chocolate, and I'll see you all later.
And this is, and uh, God bless you, and I love you all. And this is Aaron Halo 18 signing out. All right, goodbye.